So this is the lens that could have beat Leica. Ask any random person what the top of the line camera is, what is gonna get you the best results, what is the most sought after, the most highly esteemed, the camera with the best name for itself. A lot of people might say Leica. And the first image that might come to their mind is probably something that looks like the M series, whether it be M3, M6, M7, something along that line, which is kind of Leica's reputation and the image everybody gets when they think of Leica. But if you ask a photographer or someone with a little bit more knowledge on photography, videography, and cameras, etc., sure, they would agree that Leica cameras in general are great pieces of machinery and can produce a lot of fantastic results, but they're not really the main thing that separates Leica from everybody else. The thing that makes Leica Leica is not so much the camera itself, but the glass. In the 1950s, Leica was still producing its Leica 2 II and 3 series cameras. There were a few minor adjustments and slight modifications to the chassis, but overall it was the same design that they had released back in 1933. Now in the film days, there were a lot more options and a lot more competition when it comes to cameras and lenses. And so you had a lot more valid, viable, and very good options to pick from. One such option not too far from Leica over in Germany was Voigtlander. Voigtlander was definitely known for doing things a little bit differently. In 1951, Voigtlander released its Promenade rangefinder. It was the first 35mm interchangeable lens leaf shuttered rangefinder available. There had been a few other leaf shuttered interchangeable SLRs and cameras that had been produced before, but this was the first rangefinder to kind of incorporate that design. With that, it also became kind of the most mechanically uh, and feature advanced camera of the time, offering a lot of capabilities and a very well-built uh, solid chassis to put that all on. using a leaf shutter, now you had the capability for flash sync at any speed, whereas the Leica comparison of the time, you only had flash sync at 1 over 30, 1 over 60, and 1 over 125. On top of that, leaf shutters in general, at least this might be speaking more of my personal experience, they tend to be a little bit more reliable because they are more mechanically sound. You're not worried about curtains or anything that you would normally have to work with with your traditional shutter. They do require regular maintenance for sure, uh, but as long as that regular maintenance is upkept, you are less likely to kind of encounter uh, random issues or anything that might otherwise occur with a curtain shutter wearing out or things like that. So with the release of the Voigtlander Promenade, they also released a wide range of accessories to accompany it to kind of better suit your shooting style, no matter what it was. Uh, this is very similar to Leica of the time as well. Uh, Leica has always been known for having a wide variety of kind of accessories, whether it be random or very useful, they have kind of something for everything. So Voigtlander made sure to put out a lot of accessories as well to kind of suit whatever your particular shooting style may be. And then lastly, to accompany this new chassis and all these new accessories. And because they incorporated the leaf shutter into the chassis, they now had to come up with a new line of glass to suit this particular body. Overall, the lens lineup for the Promenade is fairly good, uh, but the one that sticks out the most and is still widely popular today is the Nocton 50mm 1.5 lens. So the Nocton is just a phenomenal lens. The bokeh on it is very appealing. It has a very good, smooth look to it. The color rendition that it produces also I found to be very accurate and very similar to the Leica comparisons of the time. A lot of people actually compare this and use this as an alternative to the Leica Sumalux because it is just that good. A lot of people actually do prefer it over the Sumalux as well. Another thing that I've noticed when shooting this lens, it is very good at highlight retention. A lot of times with older lenses in general, you're gonna have to worry about ghosting or flaring or anything like that in your highlights, depending upon where the sun is located in your image. 
With this lens, I really didn't have that issue at all, and I felt like I retained a lot more information and detail in those highlights, and was less prone to that ghosting or kind of color shifts and things you would get with the sun kind of working its way into that glass. Now, personally, I don't think there's any scientific way to say one way or the other if the Sumalux is better than the Nocton or vice versa. It's more so just a personal preference to your shooting style or what you like out of your images. So that's kind of where I see these two lenses lying up. But at the time, this was definitely a powerhouse lens that a lot of people were looking at as an alternative and even a better lens than the Sumalux. Also, with all of this, it came in at a more affordable and manageable price point than the Leica counterpart of the time. So with all of this, why isn't it that the Voigtlander name and the Voigtlander Promenade didn't set the stage to replace Leica and push it out of the way uh, with this new foundation in the Nocton 50mm 1.5 lens. Although Voigtlander put a lot of effort into the mechanics and the build quality and just the features of the Promenade, because they put so much effort into that, they kind of lacked in the user experience and just the functionality of the camera in general. Anybody who has shot with a leaf shutter knows it is a very different experience than shooting with a traditional shutter. There's no dial on the top of the camera. It's a very thin metal gear on the front of the lens, which just isn't the same, doesn't feel the same, and it just doesn't work quite the same way that a traditional shutter in advance would. Also with that, they had to find a different way to focus the camera. Since that was no longer on the lens, the focusing was actually incorporated into the body. And so with that, they decided to put a knob on the top left side of the camera, which in my opinion is kind of what was the major downfall of this setup. Typically you would have your left hand under the camera and your right hand on the shutter button ready to fire. And you would kind of use your left hand as support as you change your focus. With this system, you can't really do that because of the knob on top. So you have to move your left hand up and hold the side of the body of the camera as you adjust that focus, which is kind of odd. And naturally you want to move your right hand underneath to support the frame of the camera. And so you're no longer on the shutter. And so then when you're ready, you kind of have to rotate back around. And so it's kind of a back and forth awkward thing uh, that just really isn't suitable or sustainable when you're looking at something to compete with Leica, which is mainly a street photography documentary type of system. Having to go through all those steps and just that hassle of back and forth awkwardly just isn't the right setup for what they were trying to go after. Also, I found the focus to kind of work in a hill. So what I mean by that is if you started at your closest focusing distance, as you get closer and closer turning that knob, it became more and more difficult to turn it. It became kind of tricky just barely moving that knob to make sure it sits where you need it for the focus. Uh, so that was kind of another thing that really threw me off using the system. Aesthetically, to kind of match that, on the other side of the camera, you have another knob. Also, that isn't exactly the easiest to turn. Again, because it's a leaf shutter, requires a little bit more effort with how that system is set up. Uh, but so that's what they had on both sides of that shutter. And I know I mentioned things like more options with your flash sync, but when you think of Leica, I don't really think of a studio rangefinder with a bunch of strobe set up using flashes or even outdoors using flashes really. When I think of Leica, as most people, I think of documentary, travel, and even street photography. And so the flash sync, although yes, it is a perk and an advantage, I don't really see that being the same market for this camera and is kind of a wasted feature with this setup. Around 1953-1954, Leica released its M3 camera, which was a groundbreaking camera and really set the standard for the Leica reputation and solidified them as the dominant powerhouse in that space. Now, Voigtlander did come back in the late 1950s and released the Promenade 2, but there really wasn't anything different about it. A few minor changes in the setup, and they now had an advanced lever instead of a rewind knob, which was nice, but overall it just wasn't enough to keep up with the Leica M series. And in 1960, they ceased production of that camera. The Nocton 50mm 1.5 is, even today, a fantastic lens and definitely a good comparison and kind of counterweight to some of the Leica lenses you're gonna find. The Noctons are somewhat rare because of their short lifespan, 
and they kind of have a cult following and they're kind of highly sought after by a lot of people. But the original is kind of a different breed because there is no focusing system built into it. I had to actually purchase a separate focusing helicoid with the particular Voigtlander mount on the front of it. Not only that, but because that lens has no internal focus, the distance from the film or your sensor, I guess, to the glass makes it very difficult to use that lens. Most often it's going to be used as a macro. So I had to kind of work some things out and change some things to get the distance further from my Fuji sensor in order to use it as somewhere between a 50, probably closer to an 85 millimeter lens. Because of those kind of things, I can see why this lens isn't as popular as maybe it should be. It's just a lot of work to be able to use it on modern setups and does require you to purchase some very specific adapters. Of course, Voigtlander does still produce a lot of great lenses. The Voigtlander Bessa is a fantastic alternative to the Leica series of cameras. And a lot of people intermix the two. They will spend money on the Leica body because that's what they want. And they'll use less expensive of Voigtlander glass, or they will have the really nice like a glass, but they'll buy a less expensive body and something like the Voigtlander Bessa. So those two ecosystems really do still intertwine a lot today. But it does make you wonder if Voigtlander had put more effort into a better build rangefinder to accommodate the great glass and the Nocton 50mm 1.4, if they would have a more solid ground holding against Leica today, or maybe if those roles had been reversed and Voigtlander was the powerhouse and Leica chasing them. It's definitely something to think about. And if you're looking for an alternative to some of the more expensive Leica Sumilux glass, I would definitely look into the Voigtlander Nocton lenses. They are a much more I guess you could say budget friendly alternative, but the image quality is going to be fantastic. And so that is why the Voigtlander Nocton 50mm 1.5 is the lens that could have beat Leica.